I'm not speaking for the LDS church. I'm not talking about their formal doctrine or anything like that. I'm talking about some of these LDS friends that I have do love the same Jesus that I do. Do love the same Jesus that I do. We got to stop there. We got to stop there. <laughs> what did I tell you? I don't deny we have a lot of theological differences, but we we love the same Jesus. This is what the Latter-day Saints say that they believe about Jesus Christ. I'm not putting words in their mouth. This is what they would. We believe Jesus is the Son of God, the Father, and as such, inherited powers of Godhood and divinity from his Father, including immortality, the capacity to live forever. Which then puts me in a dangerous spot when I'm making a show about Jesus mm -hmm. where 95% of the content isn't from the Bible. Bible. This is insane. Hello everyone, this is John Henry, the Gospel of Christ, and welcome back to a brand new video. If this is your first time on the channel, I invite you to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you don't miss any of our new videos. Many people have asked me, how do they get a t-shirt like this? The store is down in the video. There's also a pinned comment where you can get those t-shirts, a hat or a mug at your leisure. As you guys can see, I was not here when I made that video. I was out in LA at Shepherd's Conference where my friend Corey and I sat down and went over an interview that Alan Parr did with the creator of The Chosen, Dallas Jenkins. And what we focus on in this video is Dallas Jenkins' claim that his LDS friends believe in the same Jesus that he does. You can already see the problems with that. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. So today we wanted to talk to you guys about the uh, recent interview that uh, Dallas Jenkins uh, had with uh, Alan Parr and um, one of the statements that he made during that interview is that him uh, we know that he had he identifies as an evangelical he claims that he and his LDS friends they believe in the same Jesus it, it could be either of two things number one he could believe in the same he could think that he believes in the same Jesus as the LDS Jesus he if his Jesus is in fact the LDS Jesus but if his Jesus is not the LD, LDS Jesus, it's a biblical Jesus, then it's, he doesn't know anything about the biblical Jesus because we know what the, what the LDS church, the Mormons, believe about Jesus. And we have a couple articles from them telling you what they believe about Jesus Christ and what they've written, they have written in their literature. We didn't, we didn't want to make this kind of like uh, this one-sided type of thing, uh, pull articles from evangelicals to show you what Mormons believe. We wanted them to say what they believe about Jesus. So without any further ado, let's play the full clip for you guys. And um, you let me know what you think in the comment section as we go through uh, through this video. Sounds good? Sounds good to me. Okay, it sounds good. Let's whack and roll. Um, the LDS issue is just something that uh, it got some controversy because several years ago on a, on a YouTube interview, I made the comment that I was referring to a few of my LDS friends and I said, I'm not speaking for the LDS church. I'm not talking about their formal doctrine or anything like that. I'm talking about some of these LDS friends that I have do love the same Jesus that I do. Now, do love the same Jesus that I do. Now, we may have some disagreements about some aspects of it, but some of these uh, brothers that I, that, I, that I know that I have had deep, intense, dozens of hours of conversations with might not actually sign on to or might have a different viewpoint than what the official church doctrine is. Or the official church doctrine, much like the evangelical world, has different sects and different denominations within it. And so I'm not speak I think it's dangerous to speak for any one particular group. I know you don't love it when when you see some video about, oh, evangelicals believe this. You're like, well, not all evangelicals believe that. So there are some things about uh, so anyway, I made that comment and it, it's been taken out of context to present the the, the position that I I'm, you know, think the entire LDS church believes the same thing that I as an evangelical do or loves the same Jesus I do. And I don't, I don't hold to that belief, but I do know that there's nuance within all people groups and with all, within all denominations that I don't think are, I don't think it's healthy to try to summarize it all in a headline or in a soundbite. What do you make of this? <laughs> well, it, it sounds to me like he, he just wants to gather everybody together and uh let's just not fight anymore let's not um make any uh differences let's not point out any differences let's make let's just uh all gather together in unity despite our our actual beliefs and who jesus christ is and just uh let's everybody get along and, and despite what the word of god said yeah and and um now, i would sure understand that dallas jenkins he's the creator of the show tv series the chosen um now th there were a lot of criticisms uh about his stance, 
he stands when when he in his partnership, I should say, which is a violation of First Corinthians chapter six, verses uh, fourteen, I believe, through eighteen. You can go, you can go, you can go to it. Um, it's a violation of First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter six, verses uh, fourteen through eighteen. And um, one of the things that he keeps he keeps saying is that it's a one sound bite, and that one sound bite, um, you know, you have to see things in context. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, now you have to understand the, the soundbite, the statement. If you say that you hate John Henry, um, that's pretty clear. I could have, I could be talking in for forty-five minutes, and that single second where I say I hate John Henry, <laughs> it's pretty clear to people that you hate. You said that you hate John Henry. Now let's try and contextualize it and see how does he hate John Henry? Why does he hate John John Henry? That all of that is is I would say is is um is sub tier to you hating John sub sub tier to you making the statement of you hating John Henry. So there's validity in soundbite when somebody says something. It's pretty clear, right? So if if I say that um I have Mormon friends, and I do believe that they believe in the same Jesus that I believe in. That's a pretty, that's a pretty shocking statement, and I, I really need to clarify that and clarify that through Scripture. And if someone were, were to take that section of me saying that, and it would be fair because I said that I have Mormon friends, and they believe in the same Jesus that I do. When we know that Mormons themselves, the official Mormon Mormon um, declaration when it comes to Jesus Christ, the whole Church of Mormon as a whole, what they believe about Jesus Christ. Now, um, if you say that some people within that you know within the Mormon Church don't believe the same Jesus, uh, believe in the same Jesus that you do, uh, there needs to be a lot more clarification. What is that Jesus that they, they believe in? Because we know the Jesus that they, they believe in. And that's what we, we keep saying to Dallas Jenkins, either directly or indirectly. And uh, it, uh, by the way, it was kind of disappointing as well that Alan Parr sat there and didn't say anything. Um, he didn't push back at all. I know that the, the, the man was his guest, but um, as as a theologian, he, he graduated from DTS, Dallas Theologi Theological Seminary. Um, I think as a theologian, you, there are things that you need to, <laughs> you can't just let people say it and then just pass by it and without reacting to it. I don't know how you can possibly know the Word of God and come to that conclusion ever in in your walk with christ if, if you're learning about who jesus christ is through the word uh, you he makes um a very uh, uh specific uh characteristics he tells us about who he is throughout the whole entire bible and the apostles, the apostle Paul was very clear. Even if you proclaim another gospel than the, than the one that he was proclaiming, let him let him be anathema, let him be cursed. And when you just want to take a generalization statement and, and say, okay, well, we all believe in the same Jesus, it's like, okay, well, can you say that you believe in the same Jesus as the Catholics do? Well. Um, did, did uh, Jesus Christ come in the flesh? Sure. Did he live a perfect and sinless life? Yes. Uh, did he, uh, was, was he beaten and scourged for our transgressions? Sure. Was he nailed to a Roman cross? Absolutely. Uh, did he die? Did he rise again on the third day? All of those characteristics are the same. However, when you get to the other parts, well, Catholic Jesus says that, well, he's a real hard guy to get to, and you have to go through Mary in order to to in order to get to Jesus, and then Jesus will uh, listen to his mother and then let you in to be with him. And and then you, and he's going to judge you by the works that you've done through this, this life. Well, obviously... It's not justification by faith alone. It's not. It's not in Christ alone, and and it, it's it's another gospel. It, and and so therefore, if if it's if it's that Christ, 
He has to be a different Christ, even though some of those characteristics are the same. And the Mormons are no different. Correct. I agree with you. And that's exactly, ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what Dallas Jenkins said. We m might have some differences here and there, uh, but we believe in the same Jesus. I want to make the stress this very clear. Any deviation, any little, however little it may be, any deviation from the biblical Jesus, you get a false Jesus. It needs to be crystal clear that the Jesus that you believe in is the biblical Jesus, not the not the Jesus from the Book of Mormons. Now we're gonna get to we're, we're gonna you, you said a lot here, uh, Corey. We're gonna we're gonna unpack that. Okay. But but uh, the the text that I said earlier, now it's not in First Corinthians. It's in Second Corinthians, okay. chapter six. And I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so Second Corinthians chapter six, verse verse fourteen. It's a violation of that. He, here's what it says. Be ye not unequally, I'm reading from the KJV, by the way. <laughs> uh, here comes the old English. <laughs> Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an, with an infidel? Uh, in what agreement in what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. That's a reference to Old Testament. Mm -hmm. um, now, what Dallas Jenkins is doing, he is putting himself in a bondage, like under a yoke with unbelievers. So this project, I don't know how it started, but I followed it from the very beginning and i was really encouraged by it because this is a man who was a christian he seems sincere in 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 his in his goal and he's very talented nobody can take that away from him cinematically speaking it is a very you know well produced from a cinematic standpoint however sure. however if, if this is if this is supposed to to describe the life of christ according to scripture um and then I'm making this project as a Christian and I'm partnering with folks that don't believe in the same Jesus that I believe in. This this is a violation of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through uh, uh through 18. So to be uh, to be to be to be equally to try and be equally yoked with somebody who doesn't believe in the same Jesus that I believe in, in order to show the world you know a story about jesus there's going to be a lot of problems there and we've seen those problems we've seen we've seen those mistakes and we've, we've seen some of the things that that are constantly being done tweaking and in in extra biblical you know stories in in, in in even some of the stuff that jesus says on the show to me it, it seems a little bit um i don't know if 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 he's trying to shock people or uh, I don't know what he's trying to do, but it, it seems to go beyond the limits of scripture. And um, and I don't know what I would do if if I were to engage in, in you know in a project, and then come comes to find out you know whoever is helping me with it and being involved in writing as well, co-producer. The co-producer is not the only producer. The co-producer co of the show is uh, um, one of the co-producers. I think is also a Mormon. Right. right. Uh, so, and also the set as well, and the person who's playing Jesus himself, I know, is an actor. Um, but people believe this guy to be a Christian. Sure. <laughs> but this guy is, is nothing but a Christian. You know, is that right? Yeah. Is is everything but a Christian, I should say. <laughs> well, I, I, I would have to say that if you're getting into the public life, and you're going into the Hollywood atmosphere, and you have that mentality. I, I, I have a, I coined a phrase. It's called Fox News Christians, mm -hmm. where everybody's Christian. It I love matter. that. It doesn't, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what you believe or what your belief system says or anything else like that. All I have to do is identify mm -hmm. as Christian, and everything is good. Uh, I'm I'm okay with that. Um, you're Christian, I'm Christian, wouldn't you like to be a Christian too? I, and and it's just like Christianity for everybody. And it doesn't matter how it's defined in Scripture at all. And you can basically say whatever you want to say about Jesus Christ or the gospel, and it doesn't matter. Yeah, so so 
essentially uh, being a Christian is, you know, pretty, uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll say that to be admitted in the club is very easy. All you have to do is just say that you're a Christian. It doesn't really matter what your life is about. It doesn't really matter what you believe about about Christ based on the Bible, as long as you say that you're a Christian, then, oh, he must believe in the same Jesus that I believe in. And we know that's not true. So if 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 I meet somebody who was a, was a Mormon and they tell me that they believe in the same Jesus that John Henry believes in, and uh, I, was, I would say, well, okay, well, let's go through scripture. The very first thing, again, the very first thing I will ask them is, do you believe that Jesus Christ is God? That is the issue here, the deity of Christ. People refuse to believe that. Even people who call themselves uh, evangelical evangelicals, they 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 just can't understand why Jesus is God, and they don't understand that Jesus really he had to be God in order for his sacrifice in a way to to be his sacrifice to be imputed to us. He had to be God for him to be to have the righteousness that God requires of us that we could never have and we would never have for him to die on the cross you know, as a substitute for us. He had to be God for him to endure the full fury of God for everyone who had believed in the history of the human race, you know, from Adam all the way to us and, and beyond, and everyone would ever believe, everyone who, who had believed, people who are believing now, and people will ever believe, only someone who is actually God in men could, could, could do that. So, so that's the reason why when people, even and sometimes evangelicals, they tell you, "Well, Jesus is the son, is the son of God; he's not God." I understand. I know. I know right off the bat that those people don't understand the Bible, and it was pretty clear in John chapter one. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God, and the Word became flesh. That's Jesus Christ, and we see His glory manifested. We're gonna get to that text a little later, but I want to play. This the se yeah. the second clip yeah, of let's, of him. Definitely, let's do that. Yeah, let's let's just we're gonna get to that text. Let's just play this, and uh, so you guys can see that's him again saying, uh, him referring to uh, when he was on Alan Parry he was probably referring to this and other interviews. But let's see what he has to say. I don't deny we have a lot of theological differences, but we. We love the same Jesus. Here, the, the, the problem, he said, we love the same Jesus. What does that mean? <laughs> it, it, well. it, it, what, what does that mean exactly? Now, uh, I, I want you guys to see something. This is the Latter-day Saints. What Latter-day Saints believe about Jesus Christ? Now, this is not something from an evangelical group. This is what the Latter-day Saints say that they believe about Jesus Christ. I'm not putting words in their mouth. This is what they will, the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's their news page article, um, um, and, and that's what they say about Jesus. So what do, we, what do we believe about Jesus Christ? If you're reading here, Latter-day Saints are Christians on the basis of our doctrine, our defined relationship to Christ, our patterns of worship, and our way of life. Now, when you're reading this, this article right here, you have to have a biblical mind to understand the amount of error and danger and in and even heresy that's in here so number one we believe jesus is the son of god the only begotten son in the flesh john 3 16. okay we accept the prophetic declarations in the old testament that refer directly and powerfully to the coming of the messiah the savior of all men of all humankind we believe that jesus of nazareth was in was and is the fulfillment of those prophecies prophecies well, at first glance, you might say, oh, well, okay, I mean, that's that's fine. I don't see any problem with that. Well, let's keep reading. We believe the accounts of Jesus' life and ministry recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament to be historical and truthful. For us, the Jesus of history is indeed the Christ of faith. While we do not believe, now, now there comes there comes the, fa the fiasco. <laughs> While while we do not believe the Bible to be in, inerrant, which is a lie, the Bible is inerrant, it is authoritative, and then the Bible is sufficient. They're saying, while we do not believe the Bible is inerrant, which means they believe that the Bible has error in it. To be inerrant means to, to not have any er, uh, error. So um, th they believe that the Bible has errors in it. So while, while we do not believe the Bible to be inerrant, 
complete. They don't believe that the Bible is complete. So they don't believe that the canon is closed from Genesis to Revelation. They believe that there's more. Now, this is a strategic point right there. If they don't believe that, they just opened a, a parenthesis, as it were, right? Yeah. Well, just open the door to whatever you want to fill in. To fill in. Yeah. And then what do they have to fill in? Tell me. Oh, well, they have uh, that... <laughs> Jesus, well, he wasn't necessarily God, and um, well, uh, he, he uh, uh, what other other belief? Are you asking on the beliefs of? The, of no, the no, no. Remember, we're talking about a book here. So while we do not believe the Bible to be inerrant, complete, they don't believe that the Bible is complete, or the final word of God. What does that mean? Right. That they, they they've just opened the door for yeah, what? Oh, well, for for basically just creating their own scripture and opening the door for the book of Mormon. Exactly. That's the bing 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 bing. <laughs> That's what I wanted you to say. So ladies and gentlemen, this is this is this is their this is what they believe about Christ and they're telling us what they believe about the Bible, which makes sense because we we know that they don't believe in the word of God. So they say that the word of God has errors in it. They they do not believe it is inerrant. They do not believe it is complete. Or they and they do not believe it is the final word of God, which means there could be other word, word or words of God, namely the Book of Mormon, and they'll quote it somewhere down below, also, so, because they've already established the premise. So that's how you have to read these documents. So and they continue by saying we accept the essential details of the gospel. They accept the essential details. What are those essential details? I don't know. <laughs> we accept the essential details of the gospel and more particularly the divine witness of those men who walked and talked with him or were mentored by his chosen apostles. I don't think they understand that when we say, when they say him, uh, this only refers to God. <laughs> they, they, they probably did that, but you'll see that they don't believe that Jesus Christ is, is God. So do you want to read the next one, Corey? Uh, sure. We believe that he was born of a virgin, Mary, mm -hmm. in Bethlehem of Judea, in what has come to be known as the meridian of time, the central point in salvation history. Mm -hmm. From his mother, Mary, Jesus inherited mortality. The capacity to feel the frustrations and ills of this world, including the capacity to die. Mm -hmm. We believe that Jesus was fully human in that he was subjected to sickness, to pain, and to temptation. Now, let me stop you right there. You see the 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 the, the term here, inherited mortality. They yes. did that on purpose. Of course. Yeah, they did that on that on purpose. Now, they won't say what the Bible says. For instance, let me tell you what the Bible says. In Philippians chapter two, um, it, it's just they they won't tell you what the what scripture says, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let's let, let me stop sharing for a little bit, and I'll share again so we can get on full screen here. Uh, Philippians chapter two, you guys probably know where I'm gonna go with this, but I want to read it for you from from the word, from the mouths of the Holy Spirit Himself. Um, Philippians chapter two, uh, verse eight, and being found. Uh, let me go further up. Um, uh, verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. This is Paul talking to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Uh, he's talking, he's telling them to be united in mind, to not have selfish ambitions, to, to be humble, and then to have this, this unity, this fellowship between them within the church. In the Greek, this kononia. Now, it's very difficult for them to do that. Now, what, is, what does the apostle do? The apostle points at, at, he points at, the, at the supreme example. As the, he points to the greatest example, the Lord, the suffering servant, the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, he points to his humility. He's, he points to him not caring all, only for himself. He was willing to lay down his life. He's a supreme example. He look at look at the supreme example, verse five. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who be who being in the form of God. This right there is telling you about the essence of of, of, Christ, of Christ. His essence, his God. Ness. He is God. That's his essence. He, he continues by saying, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That's why when we when we talk about the Godhead, we say that Jesus Christ is co-equal and co-eternal with God. There wasn't a point in time he was he was not God. There wasn't a point in time he was not, you know, eternal. 
So we're gonna get to the to the to that section when they say Jesus inherited immortality. So let's take a look at this. So, um, but made uh, verse six thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Verse seven, but made himself of no work. He made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Nobody gave it to him. It didn't inherit it from somebody. He himself. This is all of his plan, as it were. You know, this is the plan of the Godhead. Of course, when he, you know, when he was born through Mary, of course, he he put on flesh, he put on men. But this is something greater at play at play here, right, Corey? So, but made himself. It, it's not somebody else who's making him, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself. He's taking that upon himself. It's full authority in his incarnation there. That what they said there, they don't show full, 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 full authority in Jesus's incarnation. That's why they said, uh, from his mother Mary, Jesus inherited immort uh, mor mortality, the capacity to feel frustrations and ills of this world, including the capacity to die. So now we might pass by fast, kind of like pass by that and say, oh, okay, cool, that's the problem, and then not show the supremacy of Christ in his incarnation, because they're going to do the same thing with Christ's immortality down below. So. I want you to see this, verse 7, but made himself, back to Philippians chapter 2, of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death of the cross. Sounds like to me he was in control of everything. He was in control of everything. He was in control of, the Godhead was in control of everything. Here, he's, he's telling you that he made himself. In Hebrews, he's thanking the Father for making a body for him in the book of Hebrews. So it's not somebody, some mortal person that put that on him, that gave him that mortality, as it were, of in that inheritance of mortality, which is what they're saying there. He inherited it, he inherited mortality from his mother. Now let's let's get to the next one. We'll we'll I want you to read the the next one right here. We okay. believe we believe Jesus is a son of hold, hold on, hold on. Okay. Let me share. Hold Let me share. Let me share. <laughs> Let me oh, share. Yeah, you so, so you guys can see this. Yeah. All right. Now, hold we, on. We believe Jesus is the Son of God, the Father, and as such, inherited powers of Godhood and divinity from his Father, including immortality. The capacity to live forever. Wow. The, the, no, Go no, we got to stop. We got to stop okay, there. Okay, we got to <laughs> stop there. We got to stop there. We got to stop there. <laughs> what did I tell you? <laughs> he inherited mortality from his mother. Now he inherited immortality from his father. Now you have to, you have to think about this. If he inherited mortality from his father, what does that mean? It implies that at one point that Christ didn't he have, didn't have he didn't have Godhood as they put it, powers of Godhood. He didn't have divinity, right? He didn't have immortality. He didn't have the capacity, the capacity to live to live forever. This is this is in, insane. Well, especially if you consider uh, the uh, scripture alone. Yep. I, and the passage that I go to, and I've actually done some work on this passage in, in school, mm -hmm. and actually did a block diagram of this passage. Yeah. And it's uh, Colossians. Colossians. Yeah, Cha one. Is it chapter, chapter one? one uh -huh. Starting in verse 15. Mm -hmm. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens mm -hmm. and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or mm -hmm. dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Does that sound like anything we just read? No, not at all. And and one thing uh, I want you guys to understand, I don't know if I'm, am I, am I still sharing? I don't think I'm still sharing. <laughs> so one thing I want you guys to understand is, um, the, in Colossians chapter one, verse verse of four, what is it? Let's see, uh, verse fifteen. Where, when it says, "Who is the image of God, the firstborn born of every creature?" A lot of people think that, oh well, he was created first. This is not this this is not about this is not a chronological. Uh, um, uh, when it says firstborn of every creature, is not this is don't think of this as Christ being the first creature. You know, being created, and then th this this is what why they say that it's all these this demonic understanding of who Christ is in Scripture, and that people don't get that they just throw these things. So they say that Christ was created; it was 
probably uh, just a mere person. Mm -hmm. And then after his creation, it was never eternal. It was never eternal. It never was part of the God Godhood. <laughs> I don't know why they say Godhood. Godhead, then he inherited those powers from the Father. He kind of like ascended into div uh, divinity. Well, Godhood um, is clearly pointing to the fact that they don't believe in the Trinity. Correct. And they, they deny that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. For them to say Godhead, right. yeah, that, for them that, that, that would defeat they're, the they're, purpose. Yeah, yeah. The three co-equal persons. The, yeah, yes. Nature, right. So, so the first one of every creature that talks about the preeminence that Christ has, and he explains that preeminence. It says, "For by Him were all things created, that are in heaven, that are in her earth, visible and invisible, whether the, they be thrones." or dominions, or principalities, or powers, all things were created by him. God did not create Jesus Christ and then say, hey, buddy, now I'm going to give you the power to create everything else. That's not what this is saying here. And we can know that this is not this is saying, this is not what this is saying here because of, because of, of John chapter 1, right? Oh, I, I was actually thinking of a different passage, but go ahead. Sure, John, John chapter 1. sure. Uh, I think you were probably thinking of Hebrews 1. No, no, I'm actually thinking of John 17. John 17. Oh, sh yeah, we can go there too. Uh, <laughs> that's 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 why I love I love the book of John. And I want you, ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to pay attention very carefully to what's being being told. And we're going to get back to, um, to Dallas Jenkins in a minute, but yes, I think the scriptures are much more important here than, you know, somebody who was, I think, other confused about the scriptures so john chapter one this is a passage you need to know and understand and read it over and over again the book of john i think i've said that multiple times because it just uh it puts on 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 display the the d the deity of jesus christ um if there's one book one of the gospels that you know satan hates the most it is this when it comes to the deity of christ in the beginning verse one verse one in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's it. In the beginning, what what beginning is that? You know, it, the the is it the beginning of the creation? No, from from eternity past. In the beginning was was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's talking about eternality, from eternity to eternity. This is the state of. God the Father and God the Son. And we know that he's talking about God the Father and God the Son here because of the subsequent verses. Verse 2, uh, the same was, was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Again, the same thing uh, we, you just read in Colossians chapter 1. Right. Thrones, angels, invisible, invisible, Satan, all the demons that we we know now that are possessing people, we see the manifestations in the uh, in the gospels. Everything, dominions, and everything, all things were made by him, and without him, without him was not anything made that was made. Without him was not anything made that was made. Verse four: In him was life, and the life was the light of men. I want to keep reading because I want to get to the to the to the final verse. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now it's talking about John. The same came for, for witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, John the apostle. He was not that light, but he was there as a witness, to witness to the light, to Christ. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Just like we, we Corey and I today, and you, if you're a believer, you're bearing witness to the light of Jesus Christ. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Verse 9, that was the true light, which lighteth <laughs> every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, the Jewish people, and his own received him not. But as many received as received him, to, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor the will of men, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among that word who was right. with God in the beginning. And everything that, and there wasn't anything that was that was made without that word. That's telling us, giving us the full clarity of who that word is. Which were born and not of blood, nor the will of men. Verse 13, verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. 
and were be and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Right. This is who Christ is. So they're saying that at some point here, back to the article. Let me share my screen again with you guys and your your text. Oh, you, gotta, you guys got to see this. <laughs> and um, forgive him for reading from the KJV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm bad at it. Jesus spoke these things. Which, that's John 17. John chapter 17. Yeah. This is my favorite chapter in all scripture. Um, because it gives us a, a, a chance to ease, eavesdrop on a conversation between the Father and the Son, which I think is just beautiful. Amen. So Jesus spoke these things, lifting up his eyes to heaven. He mm -hmm. said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that the Son may glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all flesh, mm -hmm. that, to, that to all whom you have given him, he may give eternal life. This is eternal life that they may know you, mm -hmm. the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Mm -hmm. I glorified you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Amen. So now that makes John chapter 1 a lot clearer. The, before the world was, so we know that in the beginning, that beginning that John is referring to, it's before everything. Right. Before the world, the universe came into being. From eternity past to eternity future, he was always God. He was always with God. The And, and, and that relationship was the relationship of God, Father, and Spirit. The God eternally loved the Son. Before anything, he eternally loved the Son, and the Spirit was there. That 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 union between God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Spirit, and that this is the reason why love can only exist in one, in one, uh, in one in the religion of Christianity. All other gods, they've that they've only been by themselves. Buddha's only been by himself. Let's just say Buddha was a real god, right? We know these are demons. Let's just pretend that Buddha was a, was a real god. How would he understand or would he even know the concept of love or even bestowing love on his worshippers if he never had somebody to love to begin with? How how, how would he do that? How, how yeah, I'm sorry. Um, because <laughs> I, I, I was actually reading um, another thing that they believe. I, I know we're gonna get to that. We're gonna, we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get to that soon. So, so one more time. So, so, so the thing is, if we see that the, this co-eternality, this co-equality, right, right. and within that co-eternality and co-equality, we see that the Father has always loved the Son. So, this sure. idea of love, it is something that always existed in the Godhead, oh, yeah. the God eternally loving the Son. And I said that's the reason why love, that type of love only exists in Christianity because all those other you know, religions and false gods, oh. they don't understand that concept of love. Right. That's one of the reasons why you see people sacrificing their children, killing their children and giving them to those false gods. They don't understand the concept of love, the concept of relationship. Right, you know, people beating themselves and 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 walking, doing all kinds of crazy stuff to please appease the wrath of that of their gods and false gods. It's right. because those gods they've never had anybody to love. However, the son and the father, they there's all they they've always been in that relationship of the father loving the son eternally and, and from eternity past the father chose a people to give to the son that's why john uh, uh, john says in john chapter 6 um or john chapter 10 all whom the father has given me when did the father has given these people to the son it's from eternity past. Well, that's Ephesians 1, um, uh, before the foundations of the world. Yeah, before the foundations of the world, before anything was ever created. It, from eternity past, God the Father, for, in love for his Son, he gifted those people to the Son. And, and the Son, in his love for the Father, redeemed those people whom the Father has given to him. That's why it says, uh, he says uh, in John chapter uh, 10, all whom the Father... Uh, John 
I don't remember the first. I don't know. I don't remember. remember the first. No, I don't remember the first. Oh, uh, is it ten or six? I think it, it's for it, all that the Father has given me comes to me. Yeah, it comes to me. Uh, yeah, John six. I was right. John six. John six thirty six. John six thirty six. Uh, okay, uh, John six. Jesus says, "But I said unto you that ye also have have seen me and believe and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come shall come to me." So. Jesus is talking to those, those people is telling them that you have seen me, but you don't believe in me. But the, those whom the Father has gifted to me from eternity past within that bond and that loving relationship, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, that gift that the Father, the chosen ones that the Father has gifted to the Son, all of those, they will come to the Son. So all of those will believe. So that the, that's the differentiation that Christ is, is doing here. But I said unto you, verse 36, John 6, 36, that ye also have seen me, although you've seen me believe and believe me not. Verse 37, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And the will of the Father is for the Son, ultimately, you know, uh, after the, toward, towards the end of his three and a half year ministry, to redeem those whom the Father has given has given to if, the Son. If you if you talk about this Christ that you're speaking of right now to the Mormons or uh, Jehovah's Witnesses or uh, a lot of other um, sects of uh, of Christendom, uh, they will wholeheartedly reject this. Oh yeah, and they they. Um, want to believe in the Jesus that's being uh, brought to them, that's being spooned fed mm -hmm. to them by these false teachers mm -hmm. and these false religions. Let's get back to the to the other clip of Dallas Jenkins talking about the uh, the moments again. Um, as you know full well in the evangelical community, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not necessarily proud to say uh, Latter-day Saints are, are uh, don't have the best reputation. <laughs> I'll put it, I'll a bad rap. <clears throat> to put it mildly, yes. And um, I grew up um, having certain beliefs about the Mormon or LDS community, whatever. I know you guys are the terms change a lot, so or have changed recently. So forgive me if I You're fine. if I don't use the proper terminology all the time. But um, one of the most interesting things about this whole project has been my relationship with different denominational or faith traditions that I didn't have before. I've learned so much more about the LDS community than I, than I thought I knew. And what's funny about uh, the LDS folks is you guys seem to be, even though you're the most controversial, you seem to be the least confrontational. <laughs> um, it's just like, Hey, we're all, we all love Jesus. Let's just, uh, I just want to let you know, we love the show. And when people start going, Hey, you're a Mormon, you're going to hell. Uh, you just like, Hey, whatever. It's like, you just it kind of seems to roll off your back. Maybe it's cause you're used to, to being on yeah. the outside sometimes. But, about it. but uh, so even if I had significant disagreements with the LDS community, which I've learned, I have fewer than I thought I did, but even with that, I was okay. I was comfortable with that because as long as they're treating the show properly, that's all that matters. So it's been, I, I can honestly say it's been one of the top three most fascinating and beautiful things about this project has been my growing brother and sisterhood with people of the LDS community that I never would have known otherwise and learning so much about, um, about your, your faith tradition um, and realizing, gosh, for all the stuff that maybe we don't see eye to eye on, that all happened, that's all based on stuff that happened after Jesus was here. Um, the stories of Jesus we do agree on, and we we love the same Jesus. Um, that's not something that you often hear. Sometimes it's like, oh, you, uh. all right. I think I think I think that's enough. <laughs> we love the same Jesus, and they we they don't love the same Jesus as we do. And it says it says it. I mean, we could we could stay here for hours, uh, and we know. I'm gonna link those uh, articles in the video descriptions, and you guys could read further for yourselves. And I didn't mean I didn't plan for the video to be to be this long, but when when you attack Christ, it's just there's so much more. There's so, there's so much in Scripture that shows the deity of Christ, the supremacy of Christ, the eternality of Christ. It, to me, is it it it, it 
it lights up this anger, this indignation, I should say, to, to see you attacking the Savior. This is an attack on Scripture. It's an attack on the Savior as well for you to say that, you know, Mormons believe in the same Jesus. And we know that they don't believe that the Bible is inerrant. They don't believe that the Bible is complete. They don't believe that Jesus Christ is eternally, you know, is eternally God. No, no they believe that Jesus became God. He inherited Godness or Godhood, you know, from his Father, you know, and, and uh, including immortality. I'll let you close, well, Corey. Well, well. <laughs> It just seems that we just live in an age of relativism where yeah. you can just define things however you want. And we just want to make sure that we appear loving and gentle and kind. And we're following that 11th commandment that everybody talks about. What is thou, it again? Thou, thou shalt be nice. <laughs> and, and, and because you're doing that, well, that makes you Christian and everything is good. And, and uh, if you go up to those same people and and proclaim the things that we just read out of scripture they'll wholeheartedly reject that jesus and and if they were living in the times of christ they would have been the same ones saying crucify him hmm. because they don't love that jesus they love the jesus in their minds that they made up in their heads amen. and we've been doing this since exodus 32. amen amen and to, to hear Dallas jenkins saying that uh, all these issues, all the, the 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 differentiation between the Jesus is it's, it's things that happen after. Um, now I'm I'm not I'm not being arrogant or anything, but it shows the ignorance of somebody who was taking taking on a project uh, about Jesus Christ. It shows like the, the the ignorance of it. And we could we we could go um, in history and show and show you guys all the different Jesuses that came around. Um, it, we were just looking at them: Arianism, uh, Sabellianism. And Nestorianism, they all came with a Jesus. And 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 the dif the the differentiation is just a slight change they made, and they distorted the whole of the person of Jesus Christ. Just a slight change that you need to make. You know, now you have uh, you have uh, these people telling you that <laughs> Jesus became God in a way. That's how you have to read that text. We believe Jesus is the Son of God. You can read, read it in the article. Last thing we'll say, we believe Jesus is the Son of God, the Father, and as such, inherited powers of Godhood and divin divinity from his Father. He inherited it. Um, and there's a lot more to say. We're going to stop here. Oh. Cool, we got to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got to go. I have, to, I have to go to work. But um, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, come in here and discuss this. This is a, a problem that I'm actually working on myself uh, and actually shared with you some of the notes that, that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a severe problem. Amen. And this needs to be called out. Uh, we cannot sit here. Uh, you heard him say interfaith dialogue, uh, and th that's the 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 uh, the catchphrase uh, of today. It's like, oh, we're all interfaith. We're all believing in the same God. Everything. Mm -hmm. And they, actually, they were working on this with uh, evangelicals and Catholics together in 2016. Mm -hmm. And uh, John MacArthur and R.C. Sproul uh, fought against this uh, in in dramatic ways and uh, stood stood toe to toe with these people and stood shoulder to shoulder with each other in the foxhole of that war and came out of it hey uh we're still protesting we still have something to protest because you proclaim a different christ you proclaim a different gospel and so do these people and so there's a lot of other people and we need to be aware we need to be mindful we need to understand the truth of what the genuine article is through the word of god so that we can identify the counterfeit so amen that's that's my hopes amen and uh just so you guys know, Corey, in the near future, <laughs> uh, he will be uh, putting those studies on, on, on YouTube, and I've been helping him with that, so I'll be praying for him, um, and they're going to be in-depth Bible study <laughs> uh, about 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 those those attacks on on the on the character of Christ. One one last thing I want to leave you guys with. You guys know me. You know you know my love for the gospel, my love for the lost, um, and I, I try. 
and and uh, always bring it to the gospel. If I believe in the one Jesus, my gospel is to be accursed and I am to be accursed. What I'm doing here is not me picking on Dallas Jenkins or ping, picking on a, a soundbite per se. It's me showing you. This video is not meant for those who will criticize this and say, I'm just a hater. It's meant for those who do not understand what's happening and would probably not understand what's happening unless they see or come across a video like this. I have another video on, on the main channel that has over 1 million views. And I've, ha I've received a lot of criticisms for it because the majority of people love that show. And the one of the major comments I've seen on there, it's this. Why does it matter? Because it's reaching people for Jesus, and that is dangerous. Right. It is worse, far more worse, to go somewhere where you know that it has nothing to do with God and Jesus Christ than to go somewhere where you think that it has to do with God and Jesus Christ and you are on your way to heaven when you are on your way to hell. It is far more damning. It is far more dangerous. So it doesn't matter that people are being exposed to Jesus. Now, granted, God will save his people no matter what, in spite of the heresies, in spite of all the craziness happening. God, he's the one who will save his people. I don't save anybody. Corey doesn't save anybody. It is God, through the proclamation of his word, rightly divided. He saves his people, right? Um, as Christ said, I just read it. All whom that the Father hath giveth me, <laughs> you know, all whom the Father gave me will come to me. This is this is point blank period. God will bring all those people He's given to the Son through the proclamation of His gospel uh, 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 to the Son, no matter what. So now, when you say when you say things like that, it just shows that you don't really don't understand what's at what's at stake here. Right, uh, and and so, I received those those criticisms. You, you make me want to say so many more things. <laughs> we gotta stop. This is it for this video, and let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you subscribe. If not, I hope to see you on our next video with Love in Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ.